the Canadian High Arctic, one of the world's last great wildernesses and one of the most hostile places on Earth. For eight young adventurers, one through from 9,000 applicants to come here on an environmental mission to help polar bears. Week one and the team are in serious training. They've just spent their first night camping out in the wild. It was unbelievably cold with temperatures below minus 40. It was horrible. I woke up about eight times in the night, so I didn't get much sleep either. I hated it, really. Everyone wants to get back to the relative comfort of base camp. You're looking forward now to getting back to our nice big tent. Yeah. yeah. We can dry all our stuff. Excellent. Well, we're not going straight there. We're going to go and practice the navigation we've been learning this week. Oh, okay. We have buried somewhere in the ice oh. a bag of very nice goodies for lunch. Oh, it's oh cookies and sweets. Oh, oh my God, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the point you need to get to is two, three, six, six, five. When they go on their main expedition, map reading skills will be essential, and Lewis is feeling confident. We know where we're going and we've got the bearing, so I reckon we'll be about an hour till we eat. I'm hoping. But they barely started when they need to stop. Sorry, everyone, one minute. Emily's having trouble with her goggles. I hate this stupid outfit. I just feel really claustrophobic in this. It's like I can hardly even breathe. Well, step for your benefit, all right? It's minus 19 Celsius, but with wind chill, feels like minus 35. Frostbite is a real danger. I'm not risking getting frostbite or something because I'm claustrophobic. Right, let me come on. The team have got to learn fast to cope with these conditions. At the end of this week's training, they'll set off on a 100-mile dog sled journey to a remote glacier, where they'll do vital research into global warming. It's going to be the toughest journey of their lives. Right, we've watched. So you reckon we should go down there, yeah? Matt yeah. thinks we should go down there. To tell the truth, I think we should. Teamwork go. will be essential, but today Fabian feels like no one's taking any notice of him. Louis! Louis! Shush, Fabian, for one sec, yeah? Sorry. I haven't been kind of putting much input in it now because people are just not listening to my ideas. Yeah, OK, 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 go! Yeah, I don't mind, just follow. After two hard hours of trekking, the terrain starts to get much icier. Right, this is the ice, that's ice. <laughs> and pulling uphill in soft snow makes it even harder. Oh. Hold them, going to be oh, no. so tough getting our slates over this well, bit of snow. No way. When you get into the deep snow, your legs keep sinking, um, and that's a bit annoying. They're running out of energy fast. Getting a bit hungry, I just want to find it now, just find our prize. I'm a single close by, and I just can't wait till I get the food, cos I'm absolutely starving. Everyone keep their eye out, cos we reckon we're really near the place now. Guys, remember it's buried, yeah? Oh, I got it, I got it. Yay! I got it. I got it! Hey! hey. Cookies! Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah! Chocolates! Got yeah. Yeah. yeah! Three hours after setting off, they're finally eating lunch. <laughs> it was hard, but when you've got cookies in your hand, you don't really care. <laughs> but the exercise has shown a few cracks in the team. Fabian was lazy again today. He finds any excuse to not do something. Apparently I was lazy, but I didn't feel like I was lazy. He kept taking everyone else's ideas and just using them and pretending that he thought of it himself. Wait, I think we're back here. I've said that about five minutes ago when yeah, we stopped. Yeah, no. Yeah, you just repeat them. It's only been like two or three days since I'm 13. People think, oh, he's 13. He has to do loads and loads and loads of stuff. The thing is, I'm still the same person. People have just been expecting way more of me. Next morning, an amazing opportunity comes up. The chance for one of the team to help scientists with a survey of rare whales. 
Matt is lucky enough to be chosen. I've never seen the whale before and I can't wait if, to spot some. Just take, take part in this project, it's just a, a wonderful feeling. He'll be searching for highly endangered bowhead whales, hunted for hundreds of years till they almost became extinct. Now they're protected and scientists want to find out if numbers are increasing. Matt will be working with biologist Karen Ditz. We'll be following this ice edge all the way down and you make a note on your uh, booklet oh, and I then know. you do all of your counting and descriptions yeah. of all of the whales that yeah. you see. Bowhead whales are only found in the Arctic and spotting so few in such a vast area isn't going to be easy. I can't see any. Oh, you're just going to get a glimpse yeah. sometimes? An hour into the search and they haven't seen a thing. It's always disappointing, but it's not unusual either because they live in such a huge area. Sometimes it's difficult to predict where they are. I am a, a bit disappointed that I haven't seen one yet, so uh, I'll keep looking and hopefully I'll see one before the end. Down on the ice, expedition leader Ben has a challenging training exercise for the rest of the group. We've spent basically a night out on the snow in a tent. We're now going to do it the true traditional way tonight and we're going to stay out in an igloo. But you guys are going to be building your own igloos. The first job is block cutting. <laughs> and they soon find it's very hard work. It's really quite difficult because it seems to get stuck about there. Uh -huh. Look at this. Look at this, guys. That took us roughly about 10 minutes. All right, if we need 20 or 30 of those, we're going to have to start getting our block cutting skills a bit slicker. It's more exciting than a tent because you can put a tent up anywhere, but you can't exactly put an igloo up in your back garden unless you live in the Arctic. So. <laughs> up in the air, Matt's still not spotted any whales. I've just got to keep looking and hope for the best. Time is starting to run out, but Karen's still hopeful. We've uh, had lots of reports that they're at the flow edge of Cumberland Sound fairly frequently. And suddenly, Matt spots something. There's one. It's down there. Oh, this is amazing. sitting there real still and then the water came up this it's cut funnel on the top of it really clear and had white spots you see them there after the disappointing start they're incredibly lucky i've seen three now yeah did you see the white on the chin yeah i've noted those down and they were just amazing to see and they're just massive the surveys proved very worthwhile and very exciting too it was just spectacular to watch them for that split second before they disappear, and I absolutely loved it. Back at the igloo building, some of the girls are having doubts about the night ahead. At first, I was like all up for it until I heard that it could collapse. They told us that they'd be um, putting in a shovel so we could dig our way out. That kind of put me off. I was like, uh, right, okay, so the whole thing could collapse on us in the night. Emma said that it'll be warmer than it would be sleeping in a tent, and I suppose if there's all the girls are in there, then it'll be all right. Building igloos is quite an art, locking the blocks of snow together so they don't collapse. These blocks are not shaped before you've actually put them in place. You put them in place and then you actually cut the spiral in. You then gradually build up the layers all the way around. Yeah. Right. Yes. Saved by the knee, because I was right there. <laughs> how are we doing, team? Right, well, only another how many to go? No, how many? Right, <laughs> <laughs> 30. With help from local experts, the team complete two small igloos. Hey, hey, hey. Yay! But now it's time to go it alone. 
Now this is going to be a big one. It's going to be twice the size, if not bigger, than the one that we've just finished. We've got four hours before it gets dark to finish this one off. Uh, we're not really that sure about how to build it, but I don't really want to be the one responsible if it all goes wrong. Sometimes it's a bit annoying when you're lifting it up and it cracks in the middle and you just don't get a break. The wind starts to get up, lowering the temperature once more to around minus 40. It's not touching enough. The extreme cold adds to the stress. It's not it's the cold, cold. That, that is it. Come, on. Come, calm down. Let's try and just reshape it. That's sturdy. No, it isn't. That is. That's... No. No, it's not. Oh. We're always getting the angle wrong, and so um, all the blocks keep falling in. This one's dodgy. This the one we're putting on is wonky. We're actually sleeping in it tonight, which is a bit scary because all the sides keep looking like they're going to cave in. Yeah. No <laughs> they're struggling. They had a lot of help before, and it is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle trying to get the, the different blocks to, to interlink. This one's unstable. That's where it's all gone wrong, from there. Oh. You've got joint, 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 yeah. Should be overlapping, so it locks onto the next block. So it needs to re dirt from there onwards. Oh, no. Okay. It's too cold. We've had to go back and um, redo it all. So that is kind of a bit depressing to think that we're, yeah, we're that. just basically doing just what we've done block. before. We have three hours left until the sun goes down, and when the sun goes down, you, you can't do anything. I just want it up, really, so we can get dinner started and get to bed. But while some are working hard, not everyone's pulling their weight. Adam, Adam, what are you doing? Stand around watching it, it's not going to fall off on its own. I'm not actually doing much good out here because um, I don't think I'm helping because I'm quite cold. And the bitter weather's getting to others too. It just seems like it's us four, you know. Where the hell is the world? Where's Jen, Adam, Fabian? Half the team have gone to their tent to shelter from the strong wind. Emily and Courtney aren't impressed. I told them, Mom, we need some help. But do you? Oh, really? Oh, really? I didn't realise you had a I, I thought you could, you could build and make it on your own. We've been out on the land all day, so it's absolutely freezing. And it's not as if we can just like sit down now and like warm ourselves up. I don't think they realise that this is kind of getting a bit serious. It's getting a bit late. We're all cold, and you know we need to sleep in this. Well, it's, nice. it's hard enough building igloo, nice. but you know four teenagers yeah. building igloos, you know, just to have that little bit harder. Ben calls the group together. Okay, how do we reckon it's going, guys? Rubbish. Why? So it's going quite good. It's taken us about two hours to, and we haven't even made like two layers. Yeah. Why don't we break it down and basically have three people actually on the igloo itself yeah. and the rest can go and warm up. This is very serious. This has got to get done by last light, all right? We've got two hours to nail this and at the moment it ain't going to happen. Not much. <laughs> They start to work in shifts, but Fabian's unhappy, feeling the group aren't being fair to him. He confides in his teammate, Emily. It's just the way that I'm being treated. I'm not being listened to. I'm not having my views heard. I'm trying, and then I just get put down. That's it. Just say, if you're, you're all my friends, and you should be helping me and say I'm having a hard time at the moment. And it's not just Fabian who's down in the dumps. The igloo building still isn't going well. It's not getting there at all. Oh. Look at it. It's fine. But it's, it's not there. Really... Look at it. It's rubbish. No, we just need to redo those two there. It's taking ages. and We just keep going and going. There's just problems along the way. It's just slowing us down and down and down. It's like taking forever. Oh. 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 Stupid. Please in the an hour to sunset, there's depressing news for the team. Ben decides the weather's become too cold to keep going safely and work has to be abandoned. I'm sat out here in a half-made igloo. Note half-made. Spent about four hours trying to build an um, igloo. Failed miserably, so, you know, kind of a whole day wasted. It just feels like we've all worked our butts off for nothing. For some, like Alex, it's all getting too much. 
It's so difficult, you don't understand. We slaved away for nearly five hours today to make like half an igloo and we've not had any tea. We're so fed up. I just hating this so bad. So bad. This is tough. This is really, really tough. I just can't stop thinking about my mum and dad and how much I miss them and I'm finding it really, really difficult. With morale at an all-time low, leaders Ben and Emma arrange for a very special delivery from the local town. We have supper for you. Yes. What do we have? You all right, guys? Pizza and... <laughs> Oh, that was the best pizza. I don't think I'll ever, ever appreciate that as much as I did then. And it wasn't even great pizza, it just tasted like heaven. Spirits are further lifted by some extraordinary local entertainment, throat singing. It's an ancient Inuit tradition where the throats used to make sounds. The Inuit singers were just brilliant. I loved them. They imitate the sounds around them, like the natural sounds, and they were so excellent, I'm telling you. <laughs> You can't tell which person's doing the, the high bit or the low bit. You're stunned, you can't say anything because it's just so good. You know, it, good is good enough. Excellent, it was perfect. <laughs> With two small igloos completed, there's room for some of the team to sleep in them if they want. It's a tough decision. I'm going to see if it's an igloo tonight. I'm going to try it out because I know I'm going to so regret it if I didn't, didn't do it. Jenny, Lynn and Courtney, I think, want to sleep in an igloo, but me and Alex really don't because we're just too cold. Before bed, Emma gives Fabian a bit of a pep talk. You have been working hard. I've seen you. So they say to you, oh, you haven't been working hard enough. You turn around and you say, no, actually, I've been working really, really hard. And so you need to make sure they know that. And once inside the igloo, the boys admit Fab's taken a lot of stick. Adam even has a confession. I know that I'm really lazy and I just, like, spend most of the time in my tent. I feel a bit victimised because um, um, when I pull my weight, yeah, no one says anything. <laughs> and then I have a break and then I'm the person who's slacking off the person who's not doing anything. I think it's a bit sly on Fabian because they're all saying, Fabian, you're lazy, blah, blah, blah. I'm sitting off like... Ah, it's a life. Hey, Somehow it's Adam always me, misses I getting shouted at. I, I think it's because you're the littlest yeah, and like I'm everyone thinks you're really cute. Person ever. After such a hard day, they find the igloo surprisingly cosy. It is a lot warmer than the tent. I'm shivering saying warmer, which sounds really weird, but with a tent, the wind comes through. I just hope you don't drip on my head. I hope you don't melt. She's worried that it might crash down on her, aren't you? Probably one of the best nights I've had here so far. I'm a bit tired, but I'll be all right. <laughs> I'm always tired. After a day in the wild, the team are relieved to get back to base camp. Their large sub zero tent suddenly seems like five star accommodation. Yes. It's much, much better in here. It's nice and warm, but this is like luxury to what we had from out there. Yeah. I know it sounds silly because we've only been here a few days, but it feels. It feels like home. That one's there. But they won't be here for much longer. Tomorrow, the main expedition begins, and they'll be living and working out in the wilderness for two weeks. This morning, leader Emma is taking Lewis and Alex on a flight over the expedition route, more than 100 miles across some of the harshest terrain in the world. Uh, we're going to be working down the, towards the Grinnell Glacier. It's a chance to check out how difficult the journey will be for the dog sleds. Go up a really narrow gully and then head down a valley system and take exactly the route we're going to take with the dogs. Do you think they'll okay with the dogs then? I reckon they'll be all right on the sea ice, but 
getting up all this land is going to be tough. Yeah. We're going to have to help them a lot and push the sledge quite a lot. Yeah. They'll be far from civilization. If anything goes wrong, everyone will need to know what to do. So back on the ground, Ben has organised a search and rescue for their final training exercise. Got a bit of a, a, a situation on our hands. This is um, Constable Chris Coles from the police detachment in Callowit. I don't know what you guys had planned for this morning, but we need you, we need a bit of help. Um, we've got a call last night that we had a couple of reported missing on a skidoo. We have a search and rescue unit. I've asked Ben if I can borrow you guys and him and the skidoos to cover the sea ice. The team are led to believe it's a real emergency. Just at the head of this chain of islands running down here, so our, our main access to look at is going to be the right-hand side. Yeah. All right, so you want to be looking that way. Okay, over that way. They work as spotters, looking for any sign of the lost snowmobile drivers. Being stranded in such low temperatures would be very dangerous. Fabian signals to the rest of the team to stop as Emily seen something. Where? Do you know what I mean? Just there, there things like stood up. Where? I found them! We're coming! How's have we got any spare? Have we got a down jacket? Spare down jacket. We found the two casualties on the skidoo. With the situation yeah. under control, Ben decides it's time to put them in the picture. Fantastic, Emily. Well spotted, all right? This is a training exercise, OK? No way! I told Just to sort of... you, didn't I? The point of this was is that this is how they do it for real, all right? We were genuinely concerned, and um, it made us look out more as well because we, we actually thought that someone's life was at risk. It could happen, so it's best to, it's best to get us trained, so... We know what to do in a real situation. It's been an impressive performance to complete their training. We do search and rescues probably at least once a month. So what you went through is exactly what, what we do. We get people in the area to go out and help us because we have an awful lot of ground to cover. So you guys did a bang-up job. Meanwhile, up in the sky, Emma, Alex and Lewis have reached their breathtaking final destination. So what we're flying over now is the glacier. This is the end point of our whole trip. And what we're going to do is come out here and measure how much the ice has changed. It just looks like it goes on forever. It's enormous. It's 15 kilometres long. So it's a massive distance for us to be covering. The flight has brought home just how testing the expedition will be. It's making me think that it's going to be quite tough getting there in just a week. I'm a little bit nervous. But I'm just really excited, looking forward to what we're doing when we set off tomorrow. It's going to be really challenging, and I don't think anyone is quite prepared for what's up ahead. It's the last evening at Sirius Arctic Base Camp before the team head out into the wilderness on their main expedition. <laughs> Leader Ben is making sure they travel as light as possible. I don't want to see huge gargantuan I wash kits, all right? Like that, Dylan? Oh my god, what have you got in there? Toothbrush? Yeah. Toothpaste? Yeah. Deodorant? Deodorant, bin it. Bin it? Yeah. Has someone got a pen so I can wrap my name? Nobody has washed since they arrived in the Arctic a week ago, and assistant leader Emma has a surprise offer. Are you all feeling quite stinky and nasty? Yeah. How would you fancy? An oh. Arctic shower. No, no. no. Oh, no. no. It's warm. No. It's their last chance to wash properly for the rest of the trip, but only Fabian and Jenna Lynn volunteer. Come on, Fab. <laughs> Even inside the tent, the temperature's well below zero. As soon as you come out, that, that water's going to be cold within, like, seconds. So I would just rather stay how I am, nice and warm. If I'm stinky, I'm stinky, so... This is lovely and hot. This is a perfect temperature. Right, hot, hot water, hot water and soap. Jenny, what's it like? Oh, it's a luxury. It's lovely. Thanks, Emma. Spirit. The two-week expedition will be extremely tough, travelling more than a hundred miles by dog sled to a remote glacier. They'll be helping scientists check on global warming, vital research to help the endangered polar bear. It's going to test them all to the very limit. Good morning. 
Good morning, morning, right. morning, morning. I take it that everyone slept well then. <laughs> the last night of decent sleep. Lewis, is there movement there? Matt is not moving at all. Matt, Matt, Matt we you know alive. you're in there. Come on, give him a, give him a shove. Matt. I think we've put them through quite a lot this week, and this tent is really cold. It's minus 10 in here most of the time, but they see this as a nice warm home. And so we've acclimatised them, I think, and they've mentally got prepared. It's all nice. They're just about there. It's, it's whether they're prepared for the duration, I think. Mm. I can see maybe a few people, heads go down, going, I don't know whether I can cope with this. These next few weeks are the ones that are really going to count. This is the ones that are essential to help the polar bears and the glacier and everything. So I'm like raring to go. It's going to be really exciting, but I think it's going to be really, really scary as well. So I'm feeling a bit, you know, nervous about that. I reckon it's going to be quite tough. It's going to be really challenging. I don't think anyone is quite prepared for what's up ahead. The next 14 days, is going to be very, very hard. We're going to need to pull together as a team, all right? Now, it's a big breeze. Make sure you haven't got any skin exposed, all right? Because once we get out into the bay, it's going to be very, very cold indeed. Everyone up for it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Everything the team need to survive in the wild is carried on just four dog sleds. The start of their epic journey takes them over the frozen sea, and despite temperatures of minus 40 in the wind, the team are enjoying the ride. It's just so relaxing cruising along here. I enjoy it so much, and to know I've got five more, more days of this, it's luxury. But soon they leave the sea ice behind to head into the mountains. Their route takes them over stunning frozen lakes. The huskies have trouble keeping their feet. And Lewis and Adam's dog team refuse to go on. The dog just scared the dog, so they're, they're too afraid to go across because last time we went across, he fell through. Ivy, get up there. Ivy. So they're trying to stick to every single snow patch. Because we're trying to go over there, they're going the other way, basically. After six hours of sledding, the team face a last major obstacle before camp. Battle station, please, battle station. A mountain lies ahead, and the Huskies are going to need lots of help to drag the sleds over the top. Jenna Lynn struggles to keep up with her dog team. Very, very, very tiring, and the snow was really deep, so it was like soaked you up like a sponge. Hey, the wind was terrible, it really picked up and blew the snow everywhere. I think that's what made it hard. Lewis is finding it particularly difficult. He's getting no help from his partner Adam, who's on the sled sheltering from the icy wind. And Adam was just sitting on the sleigh. And I said to him, Adam, you're going to have to get up. The dogs can't pull you, yeah? And he just wasn't moving. He literally wasn't moving. I told him about five or six times, and he didn't move. I kept on getting shouted at by Lewis. And I, know, I knew why he was shouting at me, because I don't think I was, like, pulling my weight. Like, I don't think I was doing enough. He tries to do more to help, but starts to feel really ill. I think it's just um, breathing, really. I've never had the problem before, but I'm going to get to the top. I'm going to have something to drink. So I think that will make me feel better. A final push takes everyone safely to the top, but the climb has highlighted the extreme difficulty of what they've taken on. That is definitely the toughest we've had to go through on the sledge, but I reckon there's going to be some more patches like that throughout the trip, so I'm just going to have to get used to it, really. Ready? Hey, 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 hey. 
Okay, okay, okay. Get on, get on, get on, get on. Get on. They've covered 15 miles in a long, exhausting day, and they've still got to set up camp. They're on a frozen lake, and the first job is to tie up the dog teams. No. We're just screwing this into the ice, so when we chain the dogs up, they can't get away. But it's actually quite hard to get it in, and you need to make sure it's firm. Jenna Lynn is given the task of feeding the dogs. On the menu tonight is seal. I'm all right with feeding them, even though it is seal meat, because at least it's going to another animal. It's not just dying and being left there to rot. It's going to go in them and then they're going to use it as energy. So that's all right. <laughs> what we need to get is this tent up and fixed. So if the weather gets inclement, at least we've got one good shelter, all right? <laughs> but after working hard all day, fewer focusing on the job in hand. Matt's getting frustrated. Guys, can you get the tent ready? Like, just get it out and then get it laid out. I don't think some of the people in the group are taking this seriously enough. To them, it's a, a ten minutes messing around, but for people who would want to get done, it's ten minutes standing in the freezing cold, getting colder and colder. We need shelter, and there's so many more things to do tonight. And at this rate, we're not going to be ready until 10, 11 at night, and they're going to be exhausted for the next day. <laughs> Girls, where are you putting your tent? For safety, the leaders step in to get the tents oh, up as quickly as possible. You're going to have to move around, yeah, because you need to be on a diagonal to Matt. Watch it, guys. I'm not happy when you do that. That's making our tank go to the inside. Wait. Ah, it's the wind. <laughs> guys, 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 guys. Yeah. Did I not say you're not supposed to light the stoves without me here? For starters, Sorry. we're not lighting it that close to the tent wall. You're in a really flammable tent. Turn all the gas off, please. Just turn it off. Turn it off. Ben said we have to have something boiling. We have to keep topping up. All their water comes from snow, and it's 10 o'clock before enough is melted to make supper. Oh, wait, the mood in camp is at a low, and thoughts turn to home. Didn't expect it to be this hard, really. And I'm actually beginning to get a bit homesick. <sighs> I miss my mum and dad so much. Out here, everything's an effort, Nothing, nothing's easy. It's like when you go home, you can flop on the sofa, just take something out of the fridge and eat it. I was looking forward to going on the actual expedition, but now I'm not anymore. Just setting up a tent every day and taking it down and putting it up and taking it down again. I can't be bothered. They're all completely drained, and when Fabian misplaces Please. something, it pushes him over the edge. Please. <laughs> I think, Fabian, where did you last have it? Uh, I had it in my, my fleece and it's not my fleece anymore. Yeah, you definitely had it, yes. He's lost his lucky mascot, a small bear. Sleeping bags. He may have just remained in your sleeping bag somewhere. The kid's been everywhere with me, it means everything. It's got to be you. I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. No. Double check in between the two layers, because that's the most likely place that it's going to be. Yeah? In fact, we'll start on the floor there. Move, move, move your sleeping bag. You got him? Cool. Oh, he's got him, he's got him. Excellent. <sighs> yeah, wicked. Well done. Yes, so, bro. Thank you. Fabe, you're going to be all right? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah? Right, guys, night night. Sleep well, and I'll see you in the morning. All right, all right. Night, night. night <laughs> Overnight, the temperature drops below minus 30. To avoid having to leave their tent in the night, the boys each have a bottle to wee in, and Adams had a bit of a mishap. We had an uh, accident with a pee bottle last night, so uh, Adams managed to soak the inside of his sleeping bag and soak um, his right arm of his, uh, of his jacket, which is not particularly pleasant. So we got a bit of an issue drying out all that kind of stuff this morning. I left the top open, went back to sleep. About well, five minutes later, I woke up. I thought, no way. And all of it was just all over my sleeping bag. It's all down my right arm. It stinks. I don't want to put my arm in my right sleeve. But I'm going to have to eventually, but... That's oh, mad.
There's a lot of ground to cover once more. But after their late night, everyone is worn out. Lewis is fading fast. I'm so exhausted. I've just been having like the worst night's sleeps ever. I don't have no energy left in me. I could just about carry myself up the hill. I don't know. At the moment, you're severely down on liquid, yeah. all right? So you need to just top up. Okay. All right? Okay. It's basically dehydration rather than lack of food. It's just out of fluids, and, yeah. and liquid is, is energy. I'm getting a bit better. I can actually really feel it, actually. Keep, so, keep taking that liquid, all right? I'm trying my hardest on the stead uh, to do as much as I can. Um, it's not that I'm not trying, it's just that I'm a bit really, really tired. It's been a tiring day for everyone, so I just fell asleep briefly. Yeah, I'm all right. I feel really, really tired. <coughs> I just feel like they're drowsy. They'll need to wake up fast for a tricky section of the route coming up ahead. It's going to require maximum effort to hang on tight when we're actually navigating all the rocks and boulders on the downhill stretch. Just give it a shove. That's it, it's going to go now. OK. Get over! Emily and Alex narrowly escape an accident. Break, 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 break! Good save. But Jenilyn and Courtney aren't so lucky. You all right, guys? Sorry about that. Another day, another camp to set up in the Arctic wilderness. And the girls are finding it hard to put in ice screws with their tent ropes. We're in quite deep snow. So we have to dig all the way down to the ice, which is about, like, a foot down. Come on, Alex, put your back into it. Got it. <laughs> Lewis has a simpler solution. This is what we're going to use tonight to keep our tent in, because there's enough snow to keep these in. All you have to do is pack this down and put a lot of snow on top, and then it's strong enough to stay in. The girls' team is sceptical. Stay up and just blow done. away somewhere. Hope you all wake up with no tent on it. In the girls dig for more than an hour but can't find any ice to put their screws in. The biggest thing is that where they started looking for ice, there, there was no ice. And that's why the girls are behind at the moment. <laughs> Reluctantly, they have to go over to the boys' system, which is working well. And you can wipe that smirk off your face, Lewis. I did tell them, and um, yeah, they didn't listen, so so own fault, really. <laughs> They're shattered and very cold. Tempers quickly start to fray. They did it wrong, yeah, so we yeah, did them the favour of moving so the suffer. thing. Yeah. But now, now we can't, now we've got the problem. Well, why don't we turn the sled round so it's like that instead of like that? Oh, that's what right. we tried to do Hold at the in. beginning, but you just wouldn't listen. No! Oh, my why God, that's such a lie! No, just because we finished before they do, they think that it's our problem and that's our fault if their tent's not put up quick enough. We, that's what I said, well, I'll come I, help I, you, I then you said you. no. Well, well, we've the we've had no help from the boys. All they've done is laugh and talk about us and it's really, really getting on our nerves. No, you're moving in the wrong direction now. They never helped us. So why should we you're help them? Right. None of you help us anyway. You you're meant to be our team Obviously as well. They. It's a joke. It's like no point in this. Everyone's just shouting at each other, and instead they should just get some work done and stop bothering the other people and stop oh, and stop shifting the blame. Guys, don't everyone get so stressed? Yeah, just calm it down a bit. Everything will be fine. <laughs> The severity of daily life in the Arctic is starting to take its toll. This hair has not been washed for, let me think, 12 days. <laughs> ah, look at my skin. Look at it, it's gross, it's 
so dry. If you think you can change your underwear every day, you've got another thing coming. I've got this horrible, dirty, spotty face. It makes me feel sick. The pants I'm currently wearing will be staying on for the rest of the ten days of the expedition. <laughs> but the young adventurers are finally starting to get into the polar routine. Last night I actually got the best night's sleep that I've had since I've been here. We got up when we was told to, so we didn't lay in or anything. And because of that, it was easier getting up instead of like being torn from the bit. So, a really nice sleep. We promised that in the morning that we'd get it really quickly, so we'd get our stoves going and get all our food ready so that we'd be warm quickly. And we did, and it's worked out really well, so I think we'd probably do that every morning now. They're now experienced enough to start to drive their own dog sleds. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It was absolutely brilliant, cos uh, when I first did it, I thought, there's no way they're going to listen to me and they're just going to slow down and go into a halt. But um, they actually, I managed to keep them going for about an hour and a half. Oi! Tiberius! Oi! You feel, like, really in control and it feels really nice to think that if you have got to the top of the hill or something, that you've, like, commanded your dogs and led them the right way to go. Hey, That's good it, boy, Raven! Good job, good job! Come on. You can't just say, Oh, go a bit faster, please, or whatever. You've got to really shout it. And I think I surprised everyone about my nasty side, because you have to bring it out. All right. Boy. Get down. <laughs> that's like if you if you're telling them off. But if you go, good boy, good boy, good boy, that's like saying it's good in like a high voice. Good boy, good boy, good boy. <laughs> I think it's the best thing I've done all this trip. I really, really enjoyed it. Boy. Let's go. It's been a day of high spirits, the Arctic at its best. That is so scary. Go on your belly. Oh, no, no <laughs> and this time they all pulled together to get their camp set up. Once we've got our tent up, then we're going to help the boys get theirs up so that we get it done really quick. They realised doing it separately didn't work at all. So all eight did one tent and then all eight did the other and they all helped each other and it was great. But in the middle of the night, the unpredictable Arctic strikes back. A ferocious storm rips through the camp with winds of up to 100 miles an hour. I got a pole in my head to wake me up, and then the whole tent had just come down. Just the winds are blowing really hard. Uh, uh. These winds have suddenly gone up, they're gusting so fast that I'm being pushed over. And the girls and boys' tents, the big pyramid tents, just can't handle the wind. It's really, really quite harsh at the moment. As the storm rages on, their tents are being torn to pieces. These both our guidelines because the girls' tents come down as well. Uh, I'm trying to get, uh, trying to get ready to go. We have to move, but everything's covered in, covered in snow. It's so scary. I think we need to get out. Where, where are we going? The team are quickly relocated to smaller tents, which are still standing. It's been the most horrible night of my life. First light reveals a scene of devastation. I think we must have had 100 mile an hour gusts last night. Um, and some of these tents, these tents have been to the Antarctic, they've been to the North South Pole, and, uh, and they've never had this happen to them. So, uh, you know, having snap poles is very, very strong wind. It was awful. Totally, totally awful. I hated it. It's like all my fears into one. I did cry a bit because I was really scared, and it's like, it's not nice when you wake up covered in snow in the middle of the night and freezing cold. It was a massive shock waking up with like a tent on top of you and everyone kind of screaming and, you know, thinking they were going to die. <laughs> it's a relief that <laughs> I'm still here, but I think I'm just very happy to have it's over and done with now. 
but the shock of the night's events starts to hit Matt badly. It's not that bad. I know it seems at the moment like it's all out of control, yeah, but it's not. It went too far because I was already afraid by the wind. I know you were. It just collapsed on top of I know you were, I know you were. You're a strong guy. Don't get freaked out by this. We need your help, yeah? Your key. If you go down, we're stuck. I'm struggling. You're not. It's all in your head, yeah? You're in the most extreme environment. And we've had a pretty horrendous night. So I think you're keeping incredibly well, especially as you were already freaked out about the wind. Yeah. All right. Yeah? Yeah. With over a week still to go on the expedition, the storm has been a stark reminder of the realities of Arctic life. I don't feel happy about sleeping in a tent now, but I know that there's no other options, so I have to. Last night I was really upset, but if it happens again, then everybody will know how to cope. Now I know what could happen every night. I'm a bit scared and I just don't really feel that safe anymore. The serious Arctic adventurers are on an epic journey, sledding across frozen lakes and mountains and surviving in temperatures as low as minus 50. The extreme conditions have led to serious rows between the boys and the girls. Can I just say, what are you all doing? This morning, they're at it again. The girls do more than you're doing. I'm going out. Come on, if you help. You are so annoying. All your rubbish is everywhere. Well, there's been a bit of tension between the boys and the girls. Everyone's getting on everyone's nerves. The boys have been talking about us and they think we've been talking about them. I'm still a bit angry with them because all I've done really is tried to help everyone and they're just taking the mick out of it really. Expedition leaders Ben and Emma call the team together to talk about their behaviour. But I think there are certain frictions in the group at the moment, aren't there? Yeah. yeah. I just think because we're all like tired and moody and grumpy, we're just like getting at each other for like little things. In the environment, we haven't got time to be bickering like this because it's causing a really destructive atmosphere. So if anyone's got a problem with somebody else, they talk about it rashly. We're not going to argue. Second thing is, honestly, honestly, Ow. put your hand up if you pooed in the tent this morning. Is that all well, of you? All the girls did as well. They all. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the porch. In the porch. In the porch, but in the porch of a tent. I specifically said to you today, didn't I? We're on a river. Doesn't look like it now. It's ice and it's snow. But this is somebody's water source. And you have just pooed in somebody's water source because you were too lazy to walk up the hill. If I ask you not to do something, I expect you not to do it because there is always a reason. The group are here on an environmental mission. They're heading to a remote glacier to work with scientists on a global warming project, vital research to help the endangered polar bear. It's day five of the expedition and they've got to get moving fast. This is crunch day because we are now out of food, all right? We've got snacks to last us through till five o'clock this afternoon, but we need to find the food dump, okay? Now, the food dump is approximately nine miles from here and it's gonna be hard work The leaders placed food and fuel supplies along the route before the expedition began, and the next dump is over the mountains at the edge of the frozen sea. Oh, oh, oh. It's also where polar bears are found, and the team are hoping to track the animals when they get there. Get on, guys. It's not long before they hit their first obstacle, a treacherous frozen lake. Whoa, whoa. Basically, we need to get over the other side of this ice, but there looks like there's quite a lot of thin bits of ice that we could potentially break through. Just want to be careful on here because we're going to come up against all sorts of stuff. They slowly make their way around the edge of the lake. Brakes, brakes! Whoa, 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 whoa! It's some of the toughest terrain they've faced. Raven, ha, ha! Are you all right, Paul? Whoa, 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 whoa. Fortunately, nobody's hurt, but the rocky route and freezing temperatures make it very hard going. <laughs> Jenny Lynn is finding the journey quite frightening. Her team have to stop before a steep descent as she's totally freaked out. Whoa, are you okay? Are you okay? Two deep breaths. Now, 
I think we've got the seriousness of this situation, all right, guys? The dogs, they kept going towards the cliffs, and that was really scaring me, because all they had to do is tip over the edge, and then we could have ended up going over the cliff, and uh, I don't even want to think what could have happened then. Jehovah, brakes on! Whoa, 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 brakes. So, that's cool. It's OK, it's OK, guys. It's OK. All the problems are slowing them up. Good dogs, good dogs. We are already a little bit behind schedule um, and it's just getting worse because we have to keep stopping because the dogs and the dogs aren't going as fast as they possibly could because we need to help them a lot. Um, it's too rocky for the dogs to pull us down because the dogs, they just want to go straight downhill so they'll take us straight over the rocks, so it's too dangerous. So we've had to let the dogs go and we're taking the sleigh down by ourselves now. But um, it's actually harder than it looks because it's quite heavy. That's good. Last little bit. Keep the brakes on. Finally, after five days and a hundred miles of hard travel, they make it to the very edge of the frozen sea. This is the polar bear's hunting ground, where they search for seals, and for the next few days, the team are going to be tracking them to gather scientific data. I think this place is absolutely breathtaking and I'm so glad we've actually finally arrived. The five days that we've been travelling have really paid off now. Everyone's just really, really happy to be here now. The team locate the food dump with their latest supplies and come across something unexpected. It's a surprise from home. Oh, oh, baby! Oh, yes, oh, oh my God! God. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone's got a package from their parents. No. <laughs> a picture of me with my long hair. <laughs> oh, oh let's have a look it. at this one. Oh, oh, oh my God. Look at you. That's why I got him cut. Oh my God, I proper did look like a girl. The only picture my mum can draw is a hippo. <laughs> she draws it all the time. <laughs> I was going to draw a polar bear, but I don't know, so you'll have to make do with a hippo. Got Worse. news, Jenny. We know it's going to be cold where you are, so here is a great big hug to keep you warm. We're all so proud of you, and this is the hard work you put into this. Lots of love and hugs. Fine. Oh, I'm fine. No way. Oh, that is so funny. It's a dance in David Brent. <laughs> Video. Oh. Video. Why are we meant to watch videos? Videos. Yeah. Yeah. I have a place to watch videos. There's mum. And bacon. <laughs> 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 oh, that is, that is torture. Oh. <laughs> the presence of a real morale booster, but the team are soon reminded of the realities of Arctic life. Three hours after arriving at camp, and they still haven't got their tents up. Everyone just cannot be bothered to do anything. I just don't know what to do. We're not going to get to bed till like one o'clock in the morning. And then we have to get up at six o'clock. It's getting me down. I need to get to bed. I need a hot meal. I just need some energy. And even once the tents are up, the boys and girls are at each other again. We found out the boys had stolen our fuel bottle and left us with their empty one, which is so frustrating. So me and Emily just went a bit mad and kind of showered at them. Just because they, they can't set the tents up, it doesn't mean we have to stop it. Adam has just been totally... He doesn't compromise. He wants it all his way. So immature. I'm, I'm feeling down. Let's blame it on all the boys. Yeah, he's... Lynn stays out of the argument. No one that you can really point the finger at because you, you might not have, they might not have even done it on purpose, you know. They could have, it could have been an accident. At the moment, Jenna Lynn's getting on better with the boys than the girls. Her closest teammate's supposed to be Courtney, but the buddy pairing's not going well. I am finding it hard to get along with Courtney. Um, I really am trying. I hope she's trying too, you know, she's my buddy, so we're meant to, we're meant to be the closest out of anyone. I'm really, really fed up of her being in a buddy pair with Jan Lynn. To be honest, I don't like her. If I wasn't in the Arctic, I wouldn't be friends with her. We all think that Jenny Lynn's being a bit left out with the girls. She's a little bit unorganised and you have to really look after her a bit. I think she thinks we're nagging her. We're trying to stick up for her a lot more, but we just hope it doesn't get any worse. 
It's midnight before the team eat dinner. The one thing keeping them going is the thought of tracking polar bears. Really can't wait for tomorrow. I hope, I really, really hope we'll see some polar bears. I really want to see a polar bear, because if I see a polar bear, it would just be so amazing. But next morning, there's a major blow. The camp is hit by an Arctic blizzard. It means the team can't move from their tents, but surprisingly, they're not too upset. We were quite happy, actually, to be snowed in, because we get to spend the day, like, doing, like, games. personal stuff and playing games and things. It gives us a chance to get a rest and get sorted, because for the last two weeks, we haven't had any spare time to ourselves. Jenna Lynn's the only one who's unhappy about being stuck. I'm not claustrophobic, which is a good thing, but I would like to be out and about because it's not very nice sitting in a tent knowing that you've got the Arctic surrounding you and there's all those things you could be doing in the Arctic. And it's so frustrating because we've only got a week left. The boys' tent quickly turns into a pigsty. This was last night's dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't cleaned up yet. <laughs> We're making ours warmer and tidier and neater than the boys' tent because theirs is a joke. This tent is, like, the biggest mess you can see. There's forks, dirty plates, bowls, <laughs> clearly everywhere that we haven't washed out properly. <laughs> we keep all our stuff in our own little places and in bags, well, most of us. I peed, I'm in the back of the tent, which is coming up by this dinner box I'm laying on. But then I realised that we are staying here for a couple of days, so I'm going to have to bury that up. And um, Adam tried to do a poo in here earlier uh, today. I was like, no way. And he goes, I'll crouch in the corner and do it in the bag. And we was like, no <laughs> way. <laughs> I need them to go to the toilet so bad. And I go, oh, let's just have uh, what I need, what I need a poo. Got to toilet roll, right, I'm doing it here. No, get outside, get outside. <laughs> in the other tent, the mood is rather more thoughtful. This family is incomplete when you're not here. And of course, we will all miss you terribly. But also, we know that for you, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and none of us would have wanted you to have missed out. When I said goodbye and held you at the airport, I really didn't want to let you go, but I had to do this as it's your dream. It's your turn to shine, and you're the brightest star no one could ever hope to have. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, oh. anymore, I'm just going <laughs> to. This is our plates, and they're quite clean because we kind of attempted to clean them. That's mine. Quite yours? clean. Well, I've got to eat out of that. <laughs> <laughs> The blizzard goes on all day, and by evening, the boys' tent is collapsing and letting in snow. We're having to rotate the tent so it goes up properly, and because the wind's changing directions, we don't want our door where the wind will blow in. Otherwise, every time we open our door, we'll get a lot of snow in our face. The team have no idea how long this weather will last. All they can do is wait. If it's snowed in for another day, I think that's going to get really boring. I don't think I'd like the idea of being stuck in here for another day or two because it would start to get quite claustrophobic. I hear these things can last for weeks. I just hope we're not in here for that long because uh, I think we'll just go mindless. In the evening, the group get together to watch the video messages their families have sent them. Here we go. <gasps> Hi, Matthew. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Emily. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> is that your dad? What's he doing? Oh, is that cold? I'm sneezing ice cubes. <laughs> oh, I just get my hair back. That's a wig, by the way. <laughs> it's not, is it? Look, it's cold out there. Oh, Jenny. How are you out there in the Arctic? Oh, fuck! <laughs> is that your sister? That's my clothes. She's going through all your clothes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're cool, what's up? Uh, That's my big sister. You can stay in the Arctic. You know! Okay. She's got my boots! See ya, love you lots. Hey, Lewis, I bet you're missing the fire. It's really warm in here. <laughs> what do you think, Molly? How warm are you? Boiling. <laughs> <laughs> love you lots. Bye. Bye. Sometimes, like, um, you just want a little reminders from home and stuff, and that just made me feel really happy. I think it's cheered me up, but I think I really am missing out now. Outside, the blizzard is still raging. I think we'd all be upset if we didn't get the, even the opportunity to go and see some polar bears, so I really hope it clears up for tomorrow. I really want to see a polar bear, and I know that the more we're staying in here, the last chance we're going to have of seeing one. 
but next morning there's no let up in the storm. The mood in camp is very low. Very frustrating being in a tent for two days. Uh, you, you just want to get out there. Now it's the second day, it's kind of getting a bit boring and I just really want to get out there and have a chance to see polar bears. It would just make the whole adventure so brilliant just to be able to have a little glimpse or even of a footprint of one. It's the worst spring snowfall the area's seen in 30 years. We've now been stuck in here for the best part of 36 hours and it's looking like 48 hours, possibly 72 hours. And we can't do anything to change the weather uh, and we're stormbound, right? But what it does mean as far as a knock-on effect is that um, the polar bear phase that we were planning over this has, um, has, has basically disappeared because of the bad weather. So we don't get to see a polar bear? I'm feeling a bit disappointed because we've trekked uh, through the uh, Arctic just to be here and um, the thing that was driving us on is that we were coming out here to help a polar bear project and like just help out and put something back and now because of the weather we can't do that. I know everybody's disappointed. Um, I know I'm disappointed that we've not seen a polar bear. You're actually in the Arctic and you're in polar bear territory, but you can't actually see one. It's really annoying. The team's only hope now is that the weather will clear in time for them to get to the glacier to work on their global warming project. The plan, weather permitting, is to fly from here tomorrow onto the glacier, all right, where we will then spend a few days on the glacier finishing the project with the glaciologists um, up on the Grinnell Glacier, OK? But the weather may not allow that to happen. So what happens if, if we can't fly? It if we can't we fly, it till the next day. we wait and wait until the window comes yeah. and, then we, and then we go. Now that the group won't be tracking polar bears, the dog teams can head home. Fabian and Matt brave the weather to say goodbye. I've got to know them quite well. Um, especially this team, because I was lucky enough to be able to drive them, and it's quite sad seeing them go. Working with them for a whole week, it just made me feel really kind of attached to them, and I feel really kind of sad, but I think that I've got some good memories to think back on. Bye, Paul! See you later, Paul. Thank you very much. There they go. See ya! Get over there! The severe weather and claustrophobic conditions start to take their toll on the team. Lewis suddenly collapses and Antonia, the expedition doctor, has to check him over. My lungs felt as if they were going really tight and as if they were shrinking. And then I panicked and then I started trying to breathe faster. Then I got dizzy and then I fell over, yeah? And then I thought I got up straight away, but Matt said I was on the floor for about 20, 30 seconds. So I'm not sure if I fainted or I don't know what happened. He's just started panicking and when you panic sometimes you just breathe too fast for your lungs to keep up and it feels like the air doesn't go in and then sometimes you just go really dizzy and I think he's fine now. Things are coming to a head for Jenna Lynn as well. My papi, see <laughs> see my papi. When she sings a Welsh song the other girls take the mickey out of her. They don't realise how upsetting their behaviour is in such stressful conditions. You get pushed to a limit and to a point and then it, you kind of like can't cope anymore. And I'm not talking about the weather and the extremeness because that's hard enough to deal with on its own. It's when like, it's, I think the boys are nicer than the girls. The other girls often have to help Jenilyn, who finds it hard to get organised. I'm fine, guys. No, Jenny, you're not. Jenny, take your shirt out the right, put it in her hair. But she feels they turn it against her. I know that I forget things and that, and I'm, I'm sometimes unorganised, but I feel like a four-year-old because if someone has something to say, they all go on and on and on about it, and they'll all have something to say which will put them on a high and make them feel good about themselves. Say baby, yeah. Jenny. Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> oh. please, don't, please, please don't tell me you're one of those people that says 
hospital. <laughs> I don't think so. Hello. I think Jenny must feel pretty bad because I reckon she's been bottling up and she hasn't really told the girls how the way she really feels. I know it sounds really stupid and pay, but if there's... <laughs> I don't want a sweet or anything, but if there's like, if someone's got a pack of sweets or something, then they're all sharing it out of the girls. I could be sitting right next to them, and I wouldn't get one. I really don't want a sweet. It isn't about that. I don't want a sweet. I just feel left out. Next morning, the weather is finally clear. So relieved that uh, we don't have to go through that blizzard anymore because uh, it was getting us all down. It was so nice to get out of your tent and not be instantly covered in snow. It's quite nice just to walk around because it's really fresh and the boys' tent smells really weird, so it's nice to get fresh air. It's also a very special day for one of the team. Yeah, it's my birthday on here and I'm feeling really happy because it's just like I'd never ever had like a birthday anywhere else but home. I just think it's really, really exciting. Today, it's Adam's turn to do the live satellite link up to CBBC. OK, Adam, the uh, exchange on air at the moment. Every day, one of the team has been reporting back on their adventures. Stand by, guys, coming to the end of VT. Hello, Adam. Hi, June. I hear that it's your 13th birthday today. Yeah, I'm really happy that it's in the office. Sounds like a brilliant way to celebrate your birthday, but we're going to make it even better because we've got your mum, Carol, on the line. Carol, give Adam your message. Hello, Adam. <laughs> happy birthday. Teenager at last. Can't wait till you come home. Hi, Mum. You're all right? OK. Happy birthday to you, Adam. Happy birthday to you. Have a lovely time. See you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, see you soon then, okay? Okay then, bye. 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 This is definitely the best birthday present ever. I can't think of a better birthday present. Mini Arctic. And while I'm out here, I've had a phone call off my mum and the rest of my family. It's just so, so amazing. Good news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the plane can land. Oh, both here and on the glacier. Yeah. So we're off. We're definitely on the yeah, glacier, mate. which is fantastic <laughs> yeah, news. Uh, I'm really excited for today because a lot of things are planned and going on. So I'm really excited. I can't wait. To know that we actually have a chance of getting to the next stage, it's brilliant. And I think we're all a bit of a high at the moment. They're flying onto a remote glacier to measure it to check on global warming. It'll be the climax of the whole expedition, but before they leave, the leaders try to sort out the Jenilin situation. Yeah, Jenilin's been really down, and last night, sitting in the corner of the tent, she just got quieter and quieter, and I looked over and she was in tears. She just feels really excluded. The three girls are very, very close, and they are increasingly leaving her out. I don't think we're leaving her out, but Jenny's just a little bit quieter, and we do try and include a bit. Sometimes she just likes to sit quietly. Obviously, I go along with Alex and Emmy better. But, uh, yeah, I find she's quite sweet. She's very sweet, actually. I don't think I should have said I don't like her. I think I was being a bit, a bit, you know, a bit mean. But she's very unorganised, and that frustrates me so much. She, she always puts on a brave face. She's the nicest girl I've ever met, but she just won't tell anyone when she's feeling down. I feel comfortable in front of the boys. You know, I can, I can be me in front of the boys, and that's what I like, because you shouldn't have to hide who you are. After days cooped up, the team can't wait to take on their final adventure. I'm really, really pleased that we're going to get on the plane now and end up at the glacier, and I just can't wait to see what it looks like. I'm really looking forward to the next phase and just getting, getting going and actually doing something. I feel that moving on to the next phase will be like turning over a new leaf, because it's a new adventure for us all. So, you know, I really am looking forward to it. Perhaps then we can get closer. Do, do, do.